Hello, this is Teacher Pat here. I'm coming to you today with information on how to do your taxes. No, taxes. Oh my gosh, it's that time of year again. And I'll be honest with you, I dread it um, for many, many years. <clears throat> but now I'm getting a little bit better at it, I could say. Um, <clears throat> and my situation is a little bit different than most teachers because I am a contracted science teacher. And then on top of that, I am an online English teacher. So there are a lot of things to consider when you're doing your taxes as uh, you're, you, you know, being an independent teacher. It's not like your regular brick and mortar teacher where you get your form, your W-2 form, and then you just, you know, fill out it, fill it out, and then you get your your um, taxes done that way. In my case, there's so much preparation and I was going to try to come to you and kind of give you some tips and tricks about that. And But I did want to start with a disclaimer that I am not a tax consultant, okay? I'm just your regular average teacher who goes out to the field, teaches classes at different locations, and then I also teach from my own home. And that's why you see this backdrop. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, we're celebrating Chinese New Year. Yes, um, I teach English to children in China. If that's something you would like to do, um, there's a link below <clears throat> on this form as I scroll down and it'll be also posted um, under the video uh, on YouTube. So let me just go ahead and start like a little bit of I'm going to scroll down my teaching jobs. Again, I, I just want to elaborate a little bit on the locally. Um, <clears throat> I am a science teacher and I own all my equipment and I lug all my equipment. So it is a lot of an undertaking, um, especially right now. I'm doing microbiology with some elementary children and I'm even doing um, forensics with some high school students. So just that, you know, lugging four microscopes is a whole other issue. Um, and I guess, you know, one of these days I'll make a video on how I literally do this and y'all could see how I load and unload my van. And, and uh, I would love some of my kids to help me make a video for that. And I'm thinking about doing that. But anyway, going back to topic, <clears throat> So I teach locally. Um, I do go out of the home mm, most of the time, twice a week, but then there's every once in a while I'll teach something on a Saturday, um, it, some type of enrichment class. Okay, so that's those classes. And then I have my online classes. Um, and again, if you're interested, there's the link right here, and um, I, I, get, I will post that for you. Okay, so locally, online. All right, let's move down. Now, um, we've been getting a teacher deduction for $250, which I'm not being, you know, ungrateful, but that's hardly uh, any money for what we teachers actually uh, buy. Um, and I know many of you sacrificially will use your own money to make sure that your children have enough supplies, enough uh, uh, different things that you want to implement in your classroom, your own stuff that you might buy online, uh, unit studies. Um, so <clears throat> I understand the 250 tax teacher deduction is hardly nothing, but Regardless, that is something we are getting, and I don't know how long we will be getting that because um, you know how everything is with the government right now. So, <laughs> oh, wow. But if you're interested in finding out how I supply my students, I do have a thrifting teacher video <laughs> that you might be interested in looking at um, as to how I do uh, buy supplies at a uh, not so, not very expensively, and um, I keep everything stocked up for my classes. 
All right, so let's go to deductions. Um, because I do teach from my home, um, I do teach the English from my home. I also teach from my home. I have taught in my home to students I've tutored before. I've done chemistry classes out of my house. So um, that is all considered a particular fee for using your house. And my um, accountant stated that anything I have done to the home um, to <clears throat> modify the house, uh, to fix the bathroom, to, to work in this particular room that I use as a classroom, that all of that I need to bring her the receipts for. So that is something that um, I don't know if you're aware of, but keep receipts. Okay, so what qualifies you as uh, using part of your home? It's that you literally teach out of the, the room you're in. Okay, so you're not using it for anything else but teaching. And it has to look like you are teaching. I mean, there is no um, dispute here. My, my This particular room is all decorated like a classroom. And this is in my home. And I don't just, again, use just this room. I've had to use the living room. I've had to use my hallway for storage. And so um, I use quite a bit of my house for my teaching um job and not only that i have a shed out back with many many supplies because guys i am a science teacher all right well okay so that's uh taxing uh the deduction is for you teaching in your home and storing your educational materials all right so let's go to electronic office supplies in my case this year i purchased a smart tv I purchased a PC and I purchased a Chromebook. Now you might say, what did I need a smart TV for? Well, I literally do carry the smart TV every once in a while to my sites. And then I use my um, hotspot on my cell phone. And I will show educational videos through YouTube on my smart TV. And they are building these so, they are so light that it is a cool thing to be able to have as an educational tool because um, in some places that I uh, go to, they don't have that, um, how can I say, equipment in um, some of these schools that I go to. Some charter schools may or may not have it. I have taught in Montessori schools. Um, but another uh, group that I do cater to are homeschool groups. And so some of the facilities that I teach out of do not have this type of equipment. So I have to lug it with me. Okay, so <clears throat> so a PC, uh, this year my PC bust. <laughs> well, I broke down. Um, poor thing was overworked. <laughs> But anyway, the PC, and then I invested in a Chromebook because I happen to uh, need a plan B, per se. And if I want to travel away from my uh, classroom here at home, um, if I want to use it in the classroom in any of the locations I go out to, I needed some type of laptop, so I invested in a Chromebook this year. So those are some electronic office supplies. Um, then you have your regular office supplies, your cardstock, your stapler, your educational materials, things that normal teachers, <laughs> like all of us, invest in. Pencils, pens, anything, markers, glue, scissors, you name Okay, so keep receipts for everything. You got your receipts for all the electronic things you've purchased. You keep your receipts for all the uh, different types of office supplies, uh, flashcards, things like that. Anything you use to teach with. And I happen to teach 
online to children in China. So, hey, even a little doll that I bought that says certain things, touch your toes. You know what? This doll cost me money. I had to buy it. I use it to teach with. So, you know, every little thing adds up. So keep receipts for all that kind of stuff. Again, I am a science teacher. So anything I've invested in, like the microscopes, any slides, any kind of material specimens that I need to show the students, all of that I need to keep the receipts for. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go down to the internet. I have internet right here. And I invested this year in fiber optics because I, I uh, wanted the best available to teach online. So anything you use to, your <clears throat> to do your business with, make sure you keep those receipts too. So your monthly bill to pay the fiber optics, um, you need to add that, multiply it times 12, get the number, write it down some worse. Uh, this year we invested in an extensor because um, our house here at home is uh, was not getting the Wi-Fi uh, throughout the whole house. Now you say, well, why do you need it for the whole house? Well, the thing is, is that in some cases, um, I am working in on the my Chromebook. I'll be in the living room or I will be in my bedroom. And I want to be able to be working even though I am not in the classroom doing it. I cannot get the Wi-Fi. So it's still uh, my using Wi-Fi for educational purposes. I communicate to my students. I'll be in my bedroom or with my Chromebook, and I'll have a student pop in, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Valdez. What do we do? Da 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 da, and I'll answer them back. So um, that's why I invested in the extensor. So if you have got have to, had to do something like that, that also is part of your supplies. Add that receipt. Okay. So now travel. Now I don't do a whole lot of traveling. It's not like I go to Spain or anywhere like that. It, must, it would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> but <clears throat> we did uh, go to uh, a city about an hour away, my husband and I. And um, the, the trip was solely buying materials for my classes. So... As I uh, booked the hotel, I had to make sure they had Wi-Fi because I so happened to have to teach that morning from the hotel. And then not only that, I happened to make a YouTube video teaching to other people how to set up the, the hotel room for a classroom, how to do the wall, and I all of that was solely educational. So the whole weekend was for purchasing materials, for uh, doing an online video through YouTube. And um, like I said, there, the, all of it was the purpose of some type of education. So that whole travel of those three days and two nights I can tax deduct. Now, when I went, um, so my purchases right here, as you could see the purchases and supplies, even my lunch was included in that particular one day that we went shopping all morning to different uh, to purchase different educational items. That one lunch was included. Now, it was not the breakfast and it was not the dinner because according to my tax consultant, she said that it can only be between, um, like if I went from one class, if I taught somewhere and then I had to go somewhere else to teach in the afternoon, I could count the lunch period. Now, in my case, I was shopping and that is also another thing. Let's say I taught 
and I had to eat lunch and I had to go shop for materials, you can include that lunch. You can use, you could tax deduct the lunch. Okay, so in this case, we were at the hotel. I um, taught that morning. We went shopping for school supplies and then from, we went to lunch and then I shopped again for school supplies. So that I included my lunch. So I did not include dinner or breakfast because you cannot do that. It has to be uh, a job. You're working for your job and you're going from one location to another. Then you can include your lunch. Now, there's another little um, situation on that one. Let's say, for example, I'm an online teacher for uh, this one company. And if a teacher is interested in learning about how to do the job that I'm doing, I went to teach in the morning at one location and I'm going to meet her for lunch and, and teach her about what I am doing and see if she wants to, you know, come on board to learn the same thing. And so I can actually use that as a business write-off because it is. I mean, if that person joins the company, then I get a stipend for it. So, you know, it is business. So, um, so those are little situations where you can count your lunch as a tax deduction. But you have to be on the up and up that it is for your business and you are doing it in some educational method. Oh boy, I gotta, let me get that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, mileage. Well, I have had so, so much trouble with mileage. I am not a very disciplined person. So for me to get in the car and write it down and then to get to my destination and write it down, I just couldn't do it. Um, I'm not disciplined in that way. Uh, my tax accountant keeps giving me this little booklet to fill it out and I am just not good. I mean, I can, t I can determine how many miles it takes me um, from this place to that place and that place to this place. And then I just figure, multiply it th uh, 25 times because that's how many times I went there in a year. So that's, that's how I've done it lately. But really, um, it really needs to be more documented well. So what I have found is what is called Mile IQ app. That's right here, this Mile IQ app. So if this is something you are interested in, I highly suggest it. I'm barely starting to use this app. And I really like it because um, it is it uses your, your, your locator on your GPS on your cell phone. And so you could just set it and forget it for that day. And it'll track where you went. And um, then you can just use the mileage on that particular, uh, for that particular day. Now, sometimes you got to go in and say, was it for business or was it for recreation or what? Um, <clears throat> so that is one thing you can consider. Okay. Um, excuse the train noise background. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I do live close by a train. So unfortunately that can be disruptive. All right, so online education. As a teacher, we are always um, looking to uh, find better ways to teach. And so I have uh, paid for online education through Coursera.org. Some of you know Udemy. Um, there's so many places nowadays online that we can learn something new to better ourselves and better uh, be better teachers. Okay. So, um, this is the, I'm doing a test all teaching English and I'm doing that through Coursera. So I saved the receipt for that. Um, health insurance. Uh, let's see health insurance. 
as far as health insurance um i just keep the receipts uh but you really have to have really large medical bills for it to be a really considerable amount of of a deduction so um i just wrote that down but it's just um like i say that varies itemize home damage okay so um if there's anything that is wrong with the house like i said all the <clears throat> receipts that are required to fix it i need to keep that okay so for example hot water i need hot water to teach with sometimes in my home um different things like that lighting i definitely need electricity you know if anything goes wrong with the the lighting or the gas uh, we live in a home with gas heaters. So, I mean, I need to run those things to be able to teach out of the home. So just keep those itemized also and keep the receipts for all of that. So um, now, how do I stay organized for all this? Oh, my gosh. This right here is my... <laughs> my binder it is huge it is huge it's actually a two inch two inch two and a half inch probably binder and um what i like to use are the uh poly protector sheets these little protector sheets that you can just insert into your binder i'll put receipts in there um and Another really good useful thing are uh, dividers to divide everything. So use a divider. That'll help keep your stuff organized. Another thing that's really, really helpful for bigger things or um, larger amounts of items, like I have check stubs here, check stubs right here, and I use this poly envelope this poly envelope and uh, these are great. I love these poly envelopes. They are fantastic because they don't drop. You just clip it and nothing falls out of them. All right. So I do my best to keep my binder organized uh, for my taxes. I'll do my charitable contributions. I forgot to put that on there. I didn't put my charitable contributions my home repairs in one area um i'll put all my uh income receipts check stubs whatever parents pay me by check so i have to keep that um i put all the receipts of any supplies i've bought um and i do actually keep some of my bank my bank statements on here because i like to refer I'm not one of these paperless people yet. I'm trying, but I'm too old school, I guess. <laughs> so I keep the um, papers uh, for the bank statements because I like to highlight and go back and see, did I forget something that I paid for? So I do my best to keep organized. My, my uh, accountant has been so sweet and she says, you know, you do such a good job you bring everything to me so well organized and she really gives me a break because um she just likes the fact that she doesn't have to do all that and she gives me a little bit of a break there and i really appreciate my tax consultant but anyway let's go back um i didn't go into detail with the binder because there's some really great women who have awesome videos on this uh, there's this lady um, that you can find uh, this is coupon provide the lady coupon provide does videos and she goes and shops for her family and stuff well she made this awesome video about prepping for her taxes and I have learned so much from her I have also learned a lot from Alexandra Alex Alexandra is someone who is an, a professional organizer and she has a lot of great tips. So I know I probably forgot something, but I just really wanted to make this uh, video to maybe help some of you that are 
thinking about uh, going on your own as a contracted teacher and uh, starting your own business as a teacher. There's so many aspects of it. I've been doing this for 30 years and I really love what I do, I've been able to be home with my children and raise them. And um, I also homeschool them. But um, they are all grown men now. And I'm just so glad that I've had the opportunity to do this. But I wanted to pass it along to any of you women out there who are considering, um, st you know, starting up your own business. So... I hope this has helped you in one way or another, giving you some kind of tips. But I wanted to say thank you and uh, like or subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And there is a transcript share link about this listing that I did. So I'll put that underneath the YouTube video. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Happy teaching.